Okay, I'm going to try my best to leave a lot of stuff out because this video keeps running over like 10 minutes. So I'm going to try to condense everything down into five. So I'll give you kind of a short version. I probably shouldn't even waste my time talking, but here we go. I'm going to talk really fast. Basically, I've been sitting on this idea for a while and just kind of more on these thoughts and these things I've been learning and kind of these ideas have been swirling into some kind of grand theory and it's all kind of gone into one place and it really didn't click until a little while ago and it's probably one of the biggest most craziest important things I've ever realized and it makes sense it helps you make sense of everything in the world everything in the universe and here it is um, reality is a distortion of zero and you might wonder how can you how is reality a distortion of zero how does that make sense well I'll explain to you I have four minutes left okay imagine we'll go back to the beginning of time we'll go back like a second before wait I couldn't do that because time didn't exist before the Big Bang so I'd have to go into some unspecified whatever before the Big Bang had happened before there was time and when the Big Bang happened what was in the universe? Nothing, because the universe didn't exist. And you can't even say nothing, because in order for there to be nothing, you'd have to have something to give a definition. So, there was just zero. Zero was everything. Zero is the sum of all and nothing. And people, I mean, the people say that, you know, how did the Big Bang happen? Like, how did matter come out of nowhere? Like, how is that even possible? Like, you can't have nothing from you can't have nothing from like something from nothing but that's exactly where you get something from and I'm gonna show you how okay you have zero so in order to split zero apart and give make some kind of something you have to distort it you have to take zero and then distort the value of it and just make an equation and you have to have one, negative one and one and from that negative one and one that's where you create one of the most fundamental laws actually is the most fundamental law of the universe which is the law of polarity and the law of polarity is um it basically you can't have something without nothing you have that's why you have north and south that's why you have boy and girl that's life and death like from when you first you're dead before you are living you're not alive and then once you live you have all this potential but then that potential slowly fades away slowly fades away and then you hit the bottom and then your potential for life fades to zero and then you become complete again life death it's just coming back to zero and that's how everything is and there's just all kinds of examples of that um, I'll try to go through them really fast think of the earth the earth is one big zero and you have things being destroyed on earth you have things being created on created on earth positive and the negative you have things being you have things that destroy being destroyed, you have things being created to be are being created. That's kind of besides the point, but I'm saying on that circle of infinite possibilities, on of possibilities, not infinite, but there are all these things being created and destroyed. It's a constant up and down, yin and yang. And then think of the past and the future. Um, you have the past. You have the past, which is the negative, which is what gives definition to the future, which is the positive, because that is the something that's going to be created but the negative past is actually what gives the future definition it's kind of like if you have this blanket you pull it up and you have a positive and you're like oh I just have positive here but it's like no there's all this stuff under here that's negative space and that negative space gives the positive the shape and form and it gives it meaning and like you couldn't have an INTP without an ESFJ and uh, this is a good one think of male and female. I think that I'll just run this in six minutes. Think of a male and a female. Easiest example, male, you have a one penis, and then you have a female, which you have a negative one. When you combine those, oh, I just had sex with my hands, but um, when you combine those, you create zero, because when negative one and one come back together, it creates zero, and zero is creation, and it is possibility, is potential, and that's how you get new life, is from circles, from zero. And just how even from, you're like, well, where does all this distorted negative energy go? Well, think of black holes. What the hell are black holes? They're like nothing, they're like a vacuum that sucks up positive energy. And if that's even what they are, but I'm saying, 
black holes are said to contain nothing, and there's actually a black hole in the center of the Milky Way galaxy, which we all circle around. And there's actually a bigger, like another theory, that the center of the whole universe is actually a gigantic black hole that is what everything circles around. And the black holes are kind of what give us, give it shape and function and form and flow. Because without the negative, you would have no positive to give it any definition. Like, without negative, there's no definition for the positive. And that's kind of where it gets into everything that isn't you is you. And everything that isn't me is me. Because everything, like, if I'm me, I have no meaning without other things existing and being around me to give me some kind of separation and definition. So one can kind of say you have no real sense of self and you have no definition if you don't have other things around you that give you some kind of differentiating factor. So in a sense we are all the universe and the universe is kind of what makes us us and it's how we're different from it. But we couldn't exist without it so it defines us. So basically the law of polarity and you can even sum up the root of all evil I think in a certain way. So I think Maybe good is furthering along the equation and kind of making more factors and more possibilities. And if you notice with evil, I'm not saying neg these are negative or positive, but evil a lot of times, say you have like a dictator or some evil person, and what they do is they end up killing people, and they'll kill all these people, which makes it less and less and less and less, and then they gather up all these resources, which what that is in fact doing, it's making everything come back to zero. And it's just kind of like a symbolic act of the grand, large scale of the universe. And just kind of, that's why I think collectivism is evil and just all of that gathering. And I mean, it's good to gather, like, but not when you do it like that. But basically, yeah, this is pretty cool. And once you realize that your reality is nothing more than a distortion of zero, then you kind of start questioning what is reality anyway? And like, what is this world we're living in? What is this, what is the fabric of space-time? I mean, if nothing more than the opposite of nothing, like, it just blows your mind and you start to question even life itself and just what is it? And you, yeah, it just, there's a lot of questions that need to be asked and a lot of things that need to be answered, maybe pondered, but then again, maybe they don't need to be. And that's another scary thing, too. But, um, yeah, just what is this? And it's like, if you can create nothing, something from nothing, from zero, then what isn't possible?